Well, uh, childhood was um, relatively kind of difficult. Uh, I grew up in Elmhurst, uh, Illinois. Uh, I went to uh, Grace Bible Church. My dad was the associate pastor. Um, at the age of probably three, four, I was diagnosed with a learning disability. Um, and so I always felt a little bit like an outcast. Uh, this was about now 90s. So uh, back then they uh, kind of isolated you. Um, in my uh, class, I was with, you know, everyone, that, kids that sometimes were in diapers. So with that, I was, you know, then put in to uh, like gym class and with other kids, but it was always kind of difficult because there was a little bit of that gap and I never really got to uh, socialize with, you know, kids kind of my own age and at my comprehension level. So, um, so that was always kind of a little awkward. Junior high, um, I started kind of hanging out, I guess, with somewhat of the wrong, uh, wrong crowd, you could say. Um, and uh, started getting a lot more uh, arguments with my parents, got in trouble at school a little bit, started getting detentions. And um, then uh, high school ro rolled around. And um, yeah, that was, I guess, kind of a little better. Uh, started going to youth group, hanging out, a little bit more friends, but still kind of felt well, a little bit like the outcast turning point in my life was uh, my freshman year of high school. I was uh, molested by uh, a couple of my uh, peers and uh, my uh, art teacher and uh, never uh, reported it. The kids that, uh, you know, um, took place in that uh, threatened that, you know, they knew my dad, they knew the church I was at, they walked by my house. So since they kind of knew and, you know, threatened my, my family and everything, I just bottled it up. Um, uh, at one point, uh, I thought about uh, committing suicide, uh, jumping off the high school uh, roof. But um, a peer of mine just kind of grabbed me and I was isolating a little bit from youth group. So he just, uh, you know, kind of confronted me a little bit, just, I had probably no idea what I was, you know, going through. Just kind of encouraged me. Uh, so then I decided to, you know, <laughs> keep living at least for a little while. And yeah, I just kind of buried it up and then just shut down emotionally. Um, senior year of uh, high school, my older brother Scott, who I was really uh, close with, went to uh, New Zealand to attend uh, Torchbearers. Uh, Cape and Ray uh, Bible School. Mm -hmm. um, so I always kind of um, wanted to uh, do something like that, especially when I saw him come home. Uh, he started approaching me about like the Bible questions and that kind of took me for a turn because uh, I just kind of really, I guess, faked it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just kind of went through the motions but I knew really nothing about the Bible and it was kind of really turned me back and I just saw uh, personal growth and change in his life and I wanted that. Um, and yeah, I actually believe I wasn't uh, saved at that point. And then after taking a couple classes at COD, uh, I applied to his, or uh, sorry, Cape and Ray. Um, and I didn't go to the one in New Zealand, I went to the one in British Columbia, Canada point even to right now in my life, um, it really, really uh, touched me. I really got close to the Lord there. Um, right before uh, leaving there, uh, my grandpa passed away. So uh, we were really close and he kind of really encouraged me um, just to kind of keep pressing on and getting through high school. So um, yeah, so he uh, passed away, you know, a real, real shock. So, um, but I, I, you know, pursued uh, Cape and Ray. I knew he uh, was really proud that I decided to go there. And um, yeah, so I ended up going there and it was amazing. Um, in the fall, uh, 
they started uh, encouraging us to do outreach uh, ministry. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going into a medium or minimum security prison um, out there and doing prison ministry. And I, I still remember the first day uh, going there. Um, they were all like in a cage, like holding cell area. And, um, you know, the, we had some females there. So, of course, they were hooting and hollering and everything. And I was just like, man, what a bunch of caged animals. <laughs> and kind of, uh, yeah, had a lot of uh, judgment kind of even a little bit. And um, but immediately, you know, I saw, you know, through the worship services that we put on and stuff, that they really wanted to change their lives. and. Uh, I actually saw the Holy Spirit work really um, strongly in the inmates' lives and really, really touched me too. That's actually where I believe I uh, accepted the Lord because, um, yeah, just there was one night we were just kind of doing worship and um, it just uh, struck me, the Holy Spirit just struck me and I realized like, wow. <laughs> I'm going to hell, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hell. And so I just uh, immediately started bawling. And uh, one of uh, my real good friends, uh, uh, Jen, um, who was also in the um, prison ministry, would just, you know, kind of came up to me and was just like, you know, Kevin, what's wrong? And I was just like, man, I, I've been like faking it. I'm gonna go to hell, like. Uh, you know, so she, she just kind of, you know, um, led me, I guess, through the sinner's prayer. I, I kind of already knew it, but we just prayed and I just accepted the Lord right then and there. Life living from, apart from the Lord was a, a complete disaster. Um, I would say that kind of started um, after I left uh, Jesus People. I stayed there for about eight months and um, yeah, there was just uh, a lot that kind of went through while I was there. Um, I uh, got involved with a in, uh, relationship with a girl. Yeah, I just turned from the Lord and then eventually uh, ended up leaving slash getting kicked, or, you know, almost getting kicked out. I was going to get kicked out. Uh, I left um, and uh, then I just pretty much stayed with uh, my best friend's family because my parents uh, just were like, you know, we're, we're not going to support you and you're not going to move back home, you're done. Um, so I lived with them for uh, a while. And then uh, while I was staying there, I started stealing uh, from my parents. Um, I did that a little before, uh, but really got bad. I would uh, steal their car a lot, uh, just kind of go out for joy rides and stuff. And uh, so eventually uh, my mom, uh, approached me and mentioned uh, a place called His Mansion, which is a Christian um, rehab for just kind of anyone struggling with anything and then just kind of, you know, grow in your faith. So uh, I ended up going there, uh, stayed there about two weeks, and uh, then left because uh, I was still, you know, in a relationship. and. Uh, it was just, yeah, a disaster with that. So she ended up, uh, you know, breaking up with me when, uh, when I left there. I went back in uh, the spring of 2010 and tried to give it a second go, didn't last. Uh, that's when I found out about um, the sexual abuse in high school um, because I just bottled it up. I just buried it. I knew that kind of there was something wrong or like dark in my past. Um, but I, you know, didn't really come to it till going through uh, therapy. So that's when I left and the drugs kind of started. Um, I would have to say that uh, after multiple years of on and off of drugs, it was about 2015, um, I absconded from um, DuPage County Jail. Uh, I've been in and out at that point for multiple different uh, things, already been to prison. This was uh, my gonna be going on my second bit. And while I was uh, on the run in uh, Mississippi, 
a guy uh, picked me up at a gas station and we went back to his house to use uh, meth and um, he ended up, uh, when we were done, uh, raping me. Oh, man. Um, so once uh, I kind of got out of there, because I was pretty sure he was going to kill me. He was a complete, I mean, the whole scenario was like something you see off of criminal, criminal minds or whatever. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was an abandoned house. He was, asked me tons of questions about my family, if anyone's going to be looking for me, all that type of stuff. So it was pretty scary. You know, got out of there and ran from him. And so at that point, I just uh, realized I just was totally sick to my stomach at what I let, you know, happen to me because of drugs and just kind of really had a flashback of everything that was going on. I mean, no one was really uh, in my life at that point. Um, I mean, the only person that would kind of really somewhat talk to me and help me a little bit was, you know, um, Adam. Uh, Waters is now the pastor at Grace Bible Church, and uh, him and uh, his wife now Elaine. Before I believe they were just dating, uh, really kind of were you know there or whatever for me. Um, but that was kind of you know the only people, and even at that point they were kind of a little fed up or at least you know heartbroken. Um, but they were the only ones that were probably pretty like talking to me. Everyone else was just like okay. This is the same old, same old. We've done this before. We're done, you know. So I just realized that, and just like I got, I got to change. Uh, well, the first change that I saw in myself, um, I would have to say, would be a lot more um, understanding, compassion to people, understanding and acceptable of like homeless people, and a little bit more of the different lifestyle. And that kind of really came when I was back at Jesus People in the city because you just see them every day. Um, so, and I started um, getting involved with uh, feeding them at the park and stuff through people with uh, uh, Moody Bible Institute. They have a ministry. So, yeah, just kind of with that, uh, Lord working through that. I just knew, you know, from my, my background and everything that, uh, you know, God wasn't uh, honoring that. He didn't want that. He really touched my heart and it's just like, you know, you, you need to follow me and I got bigger plans for you. And um, yeah, it, just since following him more, uh, just want to uh, pray more, ask him for, you know, his leading uh, in my life. Uh, you know, if this is his will. Um, I think God gives us a lot of free will uh, for our lives in different um, paths and avenues to choose from with our different strengths and obviously he's going to use our gifts and our strengths and everything comes from him so um yeah i would just say you know praying more um uh talking to uh, more mentors uh a lot of people uh great spiral church that have been uh beside me um through the years and uh praying for me when i was in prison it's been amazing um they've really been uh even though I'm living in Ottawa now, I've really kind of still been my home church and I think I always will be my home church. Probably some of my uh, future hopes, uh, kind of been on the back burner, but I started writing a book about uh, my life, uh, my life in prison, being incarcerated, uh, and then also putting uh, some poetry in there. Uh, when I was, just coming back from uh, Cape and Ray and stuff, uh, and even a little earlier, um, I started working on more poetry, and uh, it was around the time of when I first moved into Jesus People that I was ready to collaborate everything, and I put it together and made a book called The Lost Son. And um, so, so yeah, I was gonna, I'm probably going to put some of that uh, in there as well as some new poetry. Another thing would just be... Um, Pretty much uh, s some type of ministry with uh, the, the like kind of street people, as they say, or whatever. Um, I don't really plan to necessarily uh, have a big job and, you know, make lots of money. And I'm just not you know, interested in that. I almost kind of want to just, um, let, you know, as long as the Lord would let, let me live as a missionary and just kind of have more of a, a street uh, 
ministry and just kind of meet them where they're at and kind of maybe travel um see where they're at and just kind of yeah meet them where they're at and uh see where the lord uh takes that if that's his will i just want to um first of all uh thank abel he was the one uh interviewing me to get this uh testimony done and i just want to thank uh everyone from the bottom of my heart uh at uh, Grace Bible Church. Uh, you guys have been um, amazing support system in my life and just uh, really uh, encouraging. Um, so like I said uh, earlier, I uh, consider Grace Bible Church to always be my home church. Uh, even though I'm out here in Ottawa, probably going to be staying out here. Um, but yeah, I just want to yeah, thank you from the bottom of my heart and God bless you. and. Uh, yeah, thanks for just uh, listening and giving me this time to um, share what God's been doing in my life. I really appreciate it.